the deep blue underneath the ocean will control the ocean wide from down, down underneath the sea. I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dykers, retired. The story you're about to see is reminiscent of an earlier age in naval warfare. The age of grappling hooks, boarding parties, and plundering of enemy ships. These antiquated methods actually came into use again in World War II, and our submariners in the Pacific encountered new danger and excitement. Particularly the crew of the USS Cod, who learned that even the best laid plans of boarding parties can sometimes go astray. By July 1945, much of our submarine effort off the Malay coast was devoted to blockading Singapore. Forced to support its garrison there, the enemy came up with the bright scheme of using junks, sampans, and fishing junks to carry out military supplies. They knew the submarines would not bother with peaceful fishermen. Our blockade was threatened. The practice of search and seizure resulted. When feasible, the cargo was jettisoned and the boat allowed to sail on. Otherwise, the crew and passengers were safely removed before sinking the craft. It was dangerous work, and Lieutenant Commander Edwin L. Westbrook of Sacramento, California, skipper of the Cod, took every precaution. No one knew when a machine gun would suddenly appear from the hold of an innocent-looking craft, or when enemy soldiers might spring from hiding and begin throwing grenades. Lieutenant Junior Grade Franklin S. Kimball of Melrose, Massachusetts, was in charge of the Raiders. He had trained the group to do its work quickly and efficiently. Chief Electrician's mate John Babick of Omaha, Nebraska was Kimball's right-hand man. Seaman First Class Sam J. Renfro of Fayette, Alabama. Motor machinist mate George J. McKnight of Charleston, Tennessee and a torpedoman made up the team. Every man was a volunteer and an expert shot. All right, let's go move. Well, good morning, Mr. Mercantile. I remember you. I think I remember you, too, last week, wasn't it? That's me, Tommy Sain. I speak good American, yes? Yeah. Look, uh, tell those men to hurry into the boat, Tommy. Why do you low? Why not you take me prisoner, mister? I help you plenty. Oh, I'm afraid not. Now, come on, you're holding us up. No pay, mister, no charge. Your folks will be looking for you. Oh, I'm missionary child, mister. Now missionary gone. Died. I help you plenty. Come on. Tommy Sang, with Captain Westbrook's approval, became the interpreter and the sixth member of the Cod's boarding party. Stand by to surface. Stand by to surface. Frank. All set, Captain. Come up here, will you? You know, this is the last day of our patrol. Yes, sir. What are we going to do with Tommy? I was hoping we could take him to Australia with us. Don't you think he'd be happier if we put him on this boat and let him go back to China? No, Captain, I don't. Well, I'm afraid we don't have any choice. Surface! Surface!
Vamos embora. Vejam os juntos lá. Vamos embora. Vamos embora. Vamos This is my boat. This is all I got. Please not sing boat. The Japanese make me do it. If you sing boat, they no pay me, Captain. Well, let's see what you've got. What's the merchandise, Johnny? Well, sir, there's some unfriendly army blankets. Yeah. Some sugar. And some more. Invasion sugar. Planes off the port bow. Sure, Tommy. Let's round up the crew. Go, 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 you boy. Morales. Get out to sea. Now, I want everything to look normal, you understand? Understand, Captain. Dylam hoy, Sanna! You figure the skipper took around a little ways? He has to. It's only 60 feet out here. He had an awful sharp dive angle for water this shallow, Mr. Kimball. Yeah, I know. Mac, you take the stern. Sam, go forward. Keep your eyes off the periscope. Just our luck. The last day of our patrol. The skipper won't leave us up here long. Not if he can help it. Any damage outside of the sound gear? No, sir. Periscope depth. Periscope depth. And it's gone? Looks like it. Nope, he's coming back with his friends, about ten of them. Those planes can see us. We gotta get to deep water. Right, 15 degrees rudder. Right, 15 degrees rudder. Hey, you're some lookout, boy. Nice, Doctor. Uh, uh, What's the matter with you, huh? I'm not gonna hurt you. I don't get it, Mr. Kimball. Something's wrong. Well, it's pretty choppy. You just can't see the periscope. <laughs> There's a whole gang of them. Take cover! Sam, come here! Johnny, you and Red keep an eye on the crew from the cargo. They're not working. Tommy, go out and tell them business as usual. Wave at those flames. Hey, where's that one going? The flag. He's going for the flag. Get up, Tommy! You're in thinking of so old. They're carrying bombs. I hope the skipper got out of here. One hundred and fifty feet, Captain. Don't want to get too far away. It'll be hard enough to find him as it is. Kimball's smart enough to come out a ways, isolate himself. 
Yeah, if he can. Captain, sonar contact six surface ships at eight to ten thousand yards off the stern. Head back to shore, Morales. Keep away from those gun bumps. Yes, Captain. Those gun bolts. It's the wind, Captain. I can't help it. Okay, everybody, spread out. I'll keep an eye on the crew. Anybody does anything wrong, I shoot. See? See, I got this job. Caught in the sonar. Well, he's rolling them off. Get out of here, Skipper! Get out of here! If they don't make it, we won't, that's for sure. For three hours, the car was tracked in depth charge by two enemy gunboats and a destroyer. It's evasive action sent it miles from the junk containing its boarding party. Be a big boy. Water, water, everywhere water. Oh, you made yourself a friend, huh? Uh, he hates me. Oh, let me touch him. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Man, this stuff is terrible. It's the only water they got. We had to boil it. What's the chow? I'm stopping. There's a guy cooking up some rice back there. Is that all? Next time, bring your own lunch, huh? If there is the next time, I will. This is about where we picked you up? Yes, Captain. We'll anchor here. Ciao, Mr. Kimball. Oh, thanks, Tommy. What's the matter, Johnny? Have you tasted it yet? No. I like rice with gravy or soy sauce. Even sugar and cinnamon, but not plain. Hey, sugar! <laughs> yeah, sugar! <laughs> mm. Plenty of sugar, a man can eat anything. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Force Commander grants permission to extend our patrol and continue the search, Captain. It's getting dark. We'll never find them tonight. Now, we'll have help from the Blenny and Boarfish tomorrow. One of us ought to find them. The identification I'm thinking of, George, there was something strange about that boat. The dog. That's it. A white dog in the bow. That might help. I don't know. Fred, you and Sam take the first watch. Johnny and Mac the second. Tommy will stand third watch with me. Sam? I heard you, Mr. Kimball. Say, did you know today was August 1st? So what? It's my father's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're personally able to tell him all about this someday, Sam. Ah, they'll find us. Who got a cigarette? I'm out. Me too. Didn't even bring any. I've got a couple. Have to make them last. Two to one in the morning will be eating French toast and bacon and washing it down with good hot coffee. <laughs> Lieutenant Kimball ordered the junk out to sea. In order not to lose sight of the coastline and to stay in the same area, they tacked back and forth. Hopefully, patiently. The cod was joined by the plenty and boar fish. Later by the lizard fish. 
Captain W.H. Hazard of the Blenny, senior officer of the pack, directed the search. Dark in an hour. Not a day, not a dollar. You and your French toast. Man, I'm hungry. That race just, just doesn't stick to your ribs. There must be something else on this tub we, we could eat. Why not? We wouldn't be the first. I saw the crew putting something that looked like shrimp in their right. Well, yeah. Maybe they're holding out on us. I'll check it with Tommy. <laughs> Holy cow! Maybe that's what he's smoking. He could have it. What I don't like about this is the way this wind blows. We must be 30 miles from where we were this morning. Well, Skipper will probably figure the wind, but uh, I think we'd better make some plans tonight. In case. Look! A periscope! A periscope! Maybe next time, huh? Look at Red. Periscope or not, all the same to him. <laughs> what do what he uses for nerves? <laughs> Battle stations! <laughs> 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 We're close enough, LCM. Why don't you try to get some sleep, Captain? I'll take over. I can't make it. I tried this morning. Keep up the flares for another hour. I'm going to go watch the radar screen. Ship? Oh, yes, Mr. Sam. Mixed with rice. Very good. How come you didn't grab out that stuff yesterday? They hide it, Mr. Mack. Hey, it's got a nice flavor. Yeah. There's holes in it. Don't they shell these things, Tommy? Oh, yes. Shrimp shell, Mr. Kimball. Then what else is in it? What's this? Oh, thank grasshopper. Very good. Mm. Grasshopper. You say you hungry enough to eat anything. Tell the cook to get some plain rice, Tommy. Right now, Mr. Kimball? Fred? Aye, aye, sir. All right, I think it's about time we stopped hiding our heads in the sand. Hey, a shooting star. That's the second one I saw tonight. We can sail just so long in this tub before somebody spots us and tells the Japanese. Now maybe they'll take us prisoner of war, maybe they won't. When we stay on here, we take our chance. What else can we do, Mr. Kimball? Well, the other thing is make it for sure. By the time to help, there's a chance we can get the permit. I, I'm not suggesting one or the other. just want to let you know what the alternatives are. I'll think about it, and then we'll talk it over again tomorrow night. We still have the same choice. How far is it to Burma? Around 600 miles. Is that walking or riding? You kidding, man? That's by airplane. <laughs> Two to one in the morning, we'll be eating ham and eggs and washing it down with good hot coffee. Play in lights, Mr. Right. Kimball. Oh. Thanks, Tommy. August 3rd. The search for Kimball and his men continued. But it was beginning to look like a hopeless task. Johnny? It's a quarter after 12. Well, Tommy gets a bite. Yeah. Fried fish. Wouldn't that be just lovely? 
Hey. Hey, look. It's a periscope. A periscope. Over there. It's no stick this time. I saw the sun quit off of it. Hey, Sam. Sam, do you see it? See what? Get him here, Sam. There's one in the deck house. That's not ours. Ah, oh, the superstructure's there. I hope, hope. Oh. Modified the bridge and some of the new ones could be one of them. Could be Japanese, too. Yeah. It's too late now. Whoever it is wants to find out what this mirror's all about. Sam, get the flags. Tell them who we are. You know, think my fault. We are bloody. It's the bloody! It's the bloody! I'll talk to the skipper, Morales. Don't worry. Welcome aboard. Very close in August, sir. Well, Merry Christmas. <laughs> we radioed the card. Uh, we'll have you aboard in a few hours. Well, the way you approached us, sir, looked like you knew who we were all the time. Oh, I did. Commander Westbrook said to look for a boat with a white dog, and that made it easy. You mean that dog led you to us, sir? It certainly helped. Oh, boy, am I glad we stayed hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Captain, they've been very cooperative. Why don't we let them just take off? Everything off there that shouldn't be on there? Yeah, we've cleaned it out. Okay by me. Morales, come off! Boy, you sure had some experience. Oh, I want to tell you. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. The Cod's lost boarding party sailed the South China Sea for 52 hours before it was rescued by Commander Hazard and the Blenny. Here with us to recall the events you've just seen is Captain E.M. Westbrook, Jr., who was the Cod skipper. Well, Ed, 52 hours doesn't seem like a long time now, does it? No, Admiral, it doesn't. It's hard to believe that Frank Kimball and his men were on that boat so few hours. It seemed like an eternity at the time. I can well imagine. One thing is sure, though, if it felt like a long time to us, it must have felt like forever to them. They thought the cod had been hit or sunk, didn't they? Yes. Frank told me later all of them were pretty sure we had, though none of them said it out loud until after they were rescued. They were all secretly sure that at best they'd wind up in a prison camp. But they had courage and a sense of humor, and it pulled them through. I presume that when the patrol ended, the cod made a beeline for Australia. We did indeed. As a matter of fact, we were only two days out of Perth when word came that the Japanese had surrendered and the war was over. Do you know what happened to your volunteer prisoner, Tommy Sang? Not exactly, Admiral. If I'm any judge of character, Tommy's probably got a fishing junk making catches off the Malayan coast. Thank you, Ed, for helping us to tell this story. Be with us again when we bring you another true story of the silent service. Down, 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 down